Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Welcome forward, peace and love. Um, hello everybody out there in the world. I am the homie, no cash. Yep, the one and only, if there's another, he is the phony and he's full of baloney, all right? But this morning, <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I've been doing a lot of reflecting on my life in a major way. I feel like God is speaking to me and also God is speaking through me with my actions um, because actions determine your experiences and your experiments and your experiments and your experiences are your best teaching. And so that's why I tell you guys, I'm a, a master student of my mother, father, Lord, God, source, which is the all powerful being, the all knowing God. The highest power on earth is what I'm a student of. I'm not a master teacher because I don't know it all. I only know that which I go through and get through and learn from. I'm going to say that again. I only know that which I go through and get through and learn from. All right. So with that being said, I'm going through things in my life with my mother and I'm learning. I have went through all that I want to go through negatively with her and I've learned. I'm not bitter. I don't want to bash her. I just know what I need to do for me. Get it. All right. I'm going through things with my daughter and I continue to go on this journey. I choose to go on this journey with her because she's my daughter and it's a forever journey for me. As long as she respect me and understand that I have feelings too. So there, there goes my daughter. And then here it is the experiences with my wife. All right. Now I'm going through a lot of things in my life, but I'm not here to bash the people that share these events with me. I'm not here to make the people look bad and make me look good. As a matter of fact, this video is a bit of a different one. I'm gonna be talking about or helping my cashiers and cashiers understand that during these times, a lot of people are bickering with, the, bickering with each other. Families more so than anything. Mothers and kids, fathers and kids, uh, sisters and brothers, cousins, aunties, uncles, family members is doing it more so than anything but they're keeping it on the hush. But I want to start this by saying um, Matthew 12 and 37. If you read the Bible, and those of you who don't read the Bible, if you can just understand knowledge and wisdom, when you hear it, Matthew 12 and 37 says, your words could either, uh, could either condemn you or your words could justify you. Now, in a nutshell, what it's saying is for your words could either condemn you or they could justify you. This is what the Bible says. And I know that to be true. And all I'm saying to you guys is right now, using my own life and situations and experiences that I'm going through, I'm showing y'all how I go through and get through, which is going to give you an answer, which is going to give you something, a, a, a solution, right? An example is a problem with the answer. When you was in school, they gave you examples on a piece of paper when you was in early on. And the example was just the problem with the answer and showing you how to fix it, how to get to that equation. That's an example. So I use my life as an example. I show you the problems that I'm going through in my life with my mother, with my daughter, with my wife, with anything, with me in life. I got my own issues with my own self, right? I'm not bashing anyone. I'm just showing you how to deal with your issues. All right. So now here's the thing. I want to talk to you guys about how conversation can rule the nation today. Right. Not that it can. It does. Conversation rules the nation and all because your words could either justify you or condemn you. But if you don't know how to speak enough to be clear on what your interests are and your concerns or what your desires are, then you're going to be neglected because a closed mouth don't get fed and nobody really knows what you need, what you got going on, how they can assist you, what have you. So I'm here to teach you first how to know what you want and talk for yourself. Be the representative for yourself in relationships, in partnerships, in uh, any ship, right? A ship is designed to take you from one place to the next. And if you're not going places in your ships, your relationships, your partnerships, your whatever ship, right? If you're not going anywhere in the ship, 
get off. Get off. Because the ship will lead you to their destination. And when you get where they're going, you can't complain because you stayed on the ship. Now, a lot of times ships are designed for you to stay on. It's not an easy ride. You're supposed to be able to go through a storm and weather the storm together. But if the storm is not being weathered together, you have to get off of that ship. Because sometimes you can realize that that storm isn't for you. That storm is for the people that's on that ship. You just make your, you force yourself to stay on the ship. So now, let me don't lose you. Uh, I'm going through things in my life and my life is full of good and bad, tremendous things happening. But there's some bitter things that's happening that I need to grab a hold of. And as I grab a hold of them, I show you guys in real time what I'm learning. And, and I'm gonna make this quick if I can, but there's no quick way to say it. Um, yes. I think I'm getting a divorce. And I said think because I really have the heart and the desire to make it work with my wife. Um, not just with my wife, for my marriage. I didn't get married to be a weak husband, to, to not make it work, to not give it the best fight that I could give. I didn't do marriage for that. This was not a game. I didn't marry her to, uh, to, to fake like we was about to be a, a good couple. I didn't marry her to have a companion in my life for real life or for YouTube. I didn't marry her for no other reason but except for my heart spoke to me and said, here's the woman that you love that it feels for. And I felt like just because I loved her wholeheartedly, that was enough for me to want to get her and capture her and make her mine when that's not. I want to show you guys here today on this video that love alone is not enough because here's the thing just because you love someone don't mean that they're going to be loyal to you just because you love someone don't mean that you're going to put in the hard work that it takes to make a relationship engagement or marriage works it's hard tough work man it's some of the toughest work you're going to ever do in your life and most people don't know it because they don't put in the work it's hard damn work i know it because i'm putting it in now and it's so hard man it's easy to say I'm gone. It's easy to say I quit. It's easy to say, send me the divorce papers. I'm done. That's what I'm striving not to do because I'm strong and because I foresee what could happen down the road. I know that feelings occur, you know, they're like clouds. They come and they go. One minute you're feeling this way, the next minute you're feeling the next minute you're feeling the next. Feelings are changed. And I know that sometimes we say things that we don't mean in the heat of the moment when we're feeling things. I do it myself. I do it more than others, man. I say a lot in relationships or in engagements and in life with family, right? When people piss me off, I get in my feelings, right? I'll say a lot of things that I don't mean to everyone. People know this about me. It's my defense mechanism to get you off my back when you're doing things to me that I feel like is not right. I'll say anything, even things that I don't mean. But I'm genuine enough to know that. Come back and apologize for things that you don't mean. And with the apology, you give changed behavior. You don't continue to make the same mistakes, hurting the same people who you know, know and love you. You don't continue to hurt people who you know have your best interests and your concerns, and they're using their actions in your life to reciprocate energy back to you. You don't hurt those kind of people. All right. So I may say things to hurt anybody, any of my loved ones in my life when they hurt me, but I am convicted to go and apologize, and I'm convicted to have changed behavior, and I want to get things right with my loved ones. Only person right now in my life who I'm not desiring to get things back right with because I've tried all of my life, and it just is not working and has not worked, and I'm not going to keep bunting my head up against the wall, you know, like a pain freak for nothing. I'm going to X my mother out of my life. I'll feed her with the long handle spoon, I'll help her. I'll think good thoughts from her. I'll pray for her. I'll keep her in good favor, but I won't want to be around her because she is someone my whole life that showed me with her actions and with her words that she does not have a good place to put me and she don't have my best interest at heart. That's fine. I'm okay with it. You guys be okay with it and let's move on with life. I've learned the lesson. I love her. I would still share and give, pray and hope the best for her, but we just can't coexist together. I've learned that. I spent a lifetime to learn it. All right. Moving on. Now, because of me never having a relationship with my mother, 
the woman who I've always desired to know and love because naturally I came from her. God put me on a path to set out to find that love and affection and care and nurturing from a significant other or from not even a significant other, another woman who is an elderly woman who could be a spiritual mother for me, an earthly mother for me, a mother figure, right? And I set out to do that. And in turn, yes, it makes me a clingy type of guy. Like when I meet someone that I love and I care about and I feel like I can make it work with this person, I will grab a hold to what I want. I'm not good at admiring someone or something from a distance. I have to come up and make it be known that you are a beauty to me. I feel something for you. Let's work on towards something if you would like to, right? Now, if the energy is reciprocated, if she feel the same way, we're going to set out to do this thing together or y'all are going to set out to do the thing together. What I'm here to let you know is that actions speak louder than words. Actions speaks louder than words. We know that. Words only say a small bit of communication, even when you're communicating. It's 10% of communication. Action, your, your body language is a larger, way larger, uh, a way larger portion of communication. Okay? Action. Speaking louder than words. We know this. So in relationships, you have to apply it. If you have someone in your life, two things could be going wrong here. Someone could be talking right to you. And if you value what they say more than what they do, which is the wrong thing to do, you're being fooled if you do that, then you're going to go through things in life because this person is going to talk like they love you, but then they're going to act like they don't love you. To you, it's not going to add up. But then if you got somebody in your life who could be talking down to you, they don't know how to express how they're feeling or what you're doing to them or what they're doing to you or what the turmoil is that y'all are going through. They don't understand it. They don't know how to express it. So they may fuss, cuss, be it the male or the female. They may be saying things to you that they don't mean out of frustration. But how you sum up whether they care about you or not is whether the actions match what they're saying. If they're saying these things to you and doing these kind of things to you, then chances are believe them. When people show you who they are, you believe them, not when people tell you, all right? So now, if they are talking down to you or talking bad to you or complaining about things that you're doing because you're doing a lot of things for them to complain about, but then yet the actions show that they care about you, the actions show that in spite of what they said to you, they still do for you, still want to take care of you, still want to coexist and do life with you, that's someone who's loyal to you, who want to get it right with you, right? And you have to understand that they may not know how to speak it the right way, but their actions show their sincerity. Their actions show how compassionate and how much love they have for you. Their actions speak, should speak louder than the words that they can't speak. Now, I'm only showing you this because sometimes you might be with the mate today that don't know how to talk or speak or express themselves. A lot of us men are like that. A lot of the majority of men are this way. And it's OK. But as a woman, when you are the significant other, and I don't mean just an other, not a side chick, not the other girl, a significant other. The reason why they call you significant because you're special. You're not just any old someone. So when you have a significant other or ladies, when you are a significant other and you know that this man really, really cares about you, but he's not able to express it with his words. You see that he has a problem with articulating himself with how he feel and what he wants. Then it's your job to be a helpmate and know first that he is genuine because he's trying with his actions. He's doing everything that he can, no matter if he can't say it right. If he can't find the words, that's fine, because we know talk is fucking cheap, right? Actions speak louder than words. So if this guy is acting the right way, then you should disregard some of what he say or don't say because he don't know no better. At least he's acting right. At least he's walking the walk. You know, a wise man told me, he said, your talk talk and your walk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talk. And so you should make sure you got people in your life who's walking it right, not talking it right. Talk is good because it starts with the talk. And you listen to the talk, but then you watch the actions to see if the talk match up. And if the talk don't match with the actions, this person is lying to you. They're deceiving you. You see? 
Now, I told y'all on previous videos, if y'all go back and watch, I don't just sing to entertain y'all. I'm really using my channel as a real life, real time reality TV for you guys to see me deal with adversities, hardships, successes, positive endeavors, work uh, loads and everything here in real time. So I document my life. And as I document my life, a lot of people have expectations about me and how I put my life out there, or they have the wrong perceptions about what I'm trying to accomplish here. But I want to get back to what I was saying. I told y'all on previous videos that your thoughts determines your words. Your words determines your actions. Your actions determines your destiny and your destiny. I mean, your actions determines your character and your character determines your destiny. I'm going to say it again. Your thoughts determines your words that you will speak. So whatever you think about, you will speak about. Whatever you speak about, you will do. And whatever you do is your character and your character will determine your destiny, where you will wind up in life, where you will be. So it all starts with the thought, right? But the thought turns into words. And sometimes people read things or hear things from people that are words that they can't understand well. They don't comprehend well. So it's hard to turn the knowledge or the information or the wisdom into or the instructions into or apply it and, and turn it into something that they can benefit from. So it's hard for them to hear the truth and then speak it. Right. So they, they may misunderstand or miscomprehend. And so now it's hard to speak what the person or what the book was trying to get you to get. So sometimes people read things. That is intellectual, but they don't know how to register it and then they don't know how to apply it so they don't get the results. Because actions speak louder than the words that you're reading or the words that you're hearing from people. So even if you got people giving you all the right advice or wrong advice, or if you're reading books that are good, influential, positive, educational books that you can't seem to comprehend and then you don't know how to apply the information that you were reading into your life, it's going to do you no good. All the knowledge in the world does nobody no good unless you apply one thing. It's better to know one thing and apply it than to know a gazillion things, a million things, and you're not applying anything. Now back to what I'm saying about relationships. Because I don't want to lose y'all. A lot of y'all got to realize that during these times, we need to love each other more. And if you're not around people that have the capacity to love, that has been taught how to love, that knows the importance of love, then you're not going to get it. You're going to be around the opposite, which is people don't who don't know the importance of love, who haven't been taught how to love, and they don't know how to receive it. And you can't make, you can't argue your way in the situation, guys. You can't fuss your way into a, situ a better situation, guys. You can't complain yourself into a better situation. You can't Put your hands on her and fight her into a better situation. You have to realize that this is not the right situation for you. If all of that has to occur for you to get someone to pay attention to your interests and your concerns. Now, a lot of times I'm going to speak to the guys right here and I'll get back to you ladies. Men, a lot of times we tend to think because we're willing to invest a lot of ourselves into the wrong people, places and things. We tend to think that because we're so invested, we need to stay around and try to fix something that is not worth fixing. Just because you love someone, guys, and you love her dearly doesn't mean she's the right one for you. It doesn't mean that she's the right one who's going to work with you and be a proper helpmate to help you get life right. Because that's what your significant other or your wife is supposed to be, a helpmate. And when you choose a woman, when you consciously choose the woman who you know is not equipped to be the proper helpmate for you that you need, it's your fault, guys. Because we do the pursuing. And we do the most in relationships. I, I'm going to just be real. If you are a good guy, if you really tell the truth about relationships, we, if we care about the woman and really want the woman, we put out way more in relationships. The male does. We, it's our job to take care. It's our job to pay bills. It's our job to go to work and make sure our family's right. It's our job to protect and make sure nobody mistreats our family. It's our job to do 
a lot. I'm talking about a lot. And I'm not saying we should duck that responsibility. We should take it on wholeheartedly because we are alpha males. We are, we are the sole controller of the relationship. We're the head, so to speak. But the head can't go no way without the body and vice versa. All right? And so, guys, when you're, if you are the head and you're choosing women, sometimes it's your fault when you choose the wrong woman. Not sometimes, a lot of times, all the time. You have to take accountability for the woman that you're entertaining. All right. And if things go to hell, hell in a bread basket because of the woman that you chose, guys, take responsibility for your actions. Know that you chose the woman just because of the wrong reasons. She was thick. She had a fat ass, though, dog. Or she had some nice boobs or or oh, she was light skinned and fine. She was exotic. She was uh, Puerto Rican, Dominican. She was uh, Brazilian. She was woo. Now, those are some good attributes in women, if that's what you're looking for. But in order to make a relationship work, guys, it's going to take a whole lot more than looks. It's going to take a whole lot more than love. It's going to take hard work, dedication, loyalty, and, and, and someone who really is ready to fit the battle with you, with who you are, the good, the bad you, whatever. You should not be in a relationship arguing all the time about things that the woman, guys, about things that the woman is not doing. Or bad things that she is doing. If you keep finding yourself having to complain. Or having to explain. Or having to discuss stuff that she is not correcting. With change behavior. This woman don't really care about you. Bottom line period. Now if you choose to argue. Fuss. Fight. Or pay. And invest energy. Currency. And effort into a situation. That is not giving you the same thing back. It's your fault guys. Now if it leads you. To doing something that you uh, lost your cool on. That's your fault, guys. And I'm not here to name the blame on anyone. I'm not here to take up for guys and, and take up for women and, and bash males. And I'm not here to take up for males and bash women. I'm here simply to put it all on the table and show us the truth about male and female. And the hard work that it takes for us to coexist together and be helpmates. And know that if that's what you want. Where much is we're given, much is required. Where much is given to you, much is going to be required from you. So no man ain't going to get in your life, women, and do everything that you want him to do. And you ain't going to do nothing that he want him to do. All right, woman, you got that? Men, there ain't no woman that's going to get in your life and do everything that you want them to do. And you ain't reciprocating the energy and giving them something back to keep them rejuvenated, uh, energized, and strong enough to reciprocate it back to you. That's what it's a cycle. It's a cycle of two people doing things for each other that keeps the circle moving. And once one person slack up on their job, the circle is not moving anymore. The wheels ain't turning. And so, guys, I'm speaking to us right now. A lot of times we get in relationships and we become invested energy wise, financially wise, knowledge, wisdom, whatever wise that you are invested into relationships. Sometimes a lot of times we are investing more than the female. And it's OK as long as you got a female who appreciates and understands that and comprehends that. And then she does her best effort to reciprocate that. Now, whether she can meet your needs or do as much as you're doing or not, that's not what I'm saying. Long as she tries, long as she make attempts, long as she lets you know that, baby, I'm here with you. I see how much of the workload you got. I want to help. Baby, you're doing great things. She encourages, inspires you, motivates and push you, regardless of whether she have anything or not. Financially to bring to the table, she's bringing energy, effort, willpower. She's bringing encouragement, uh, inspiration, influence. If you got that, fellas, you win it, okay? And learn how to nourish it. Learn how to cultivate it in her. Because we're not cultivators, guys. I understand that. But when you have someone around you that you want in your life because you love them, I want you to know, guys, love ain't going to keep a woman and love ain't going to keep you interested within the woman. You can love a woman and not be loyal to her. A lot of times we fall in love. That's why people say, be careful what you put your heart into. Careful what you love because your body will follow. If you love the high from crack, you're going to follow crack. If you love shopping and love to spend money, you're gonna, your body is going to be in places to spend money all the time. You're going to be on a shopping freak, right? If you love the wrong someone who just mistreats you, they don't care about you, they're not concerned, and they don't have your best interest at heart, but you just love them. Your body is going to follow them 
to nowhere just because you love them. So I'm here to tell you, in order to work on a marriage and be in a marriage, it's a lot more than just love. You got to have loyalty, hard work, and dedication involved. Right. And if your significant other is not loyal to you, ain't hardworking and ain't ready to put in the work that you're putting in, it's not going to work. Y'all are unequally yoked and you're doomed. It's bound to crash. So, guys, don't stay around women too long complaining and fussing and trying to spend all your money and buy your way into her life. Because you will never be able to invest. You become over. You will become overly invested into that, and it will cause you problems in the end. Because you see it in in in, in stocks and in Wall Street. You know when people are invested too much in something and they lose, they want to kill themselves. They they want to slit their wrists. They want to say life is over. Oh my God, I cannot take this big of a loss. So I'm letting you guys know: stop investing too much into the wrong situations. You see the telltale signs when you meet this woman. If you're having to argue so much about your interests and your concerns, if you have to explain so much about that she's not paying attention to the matters in your life the way that you feel like she should, but you're always coming to the back and being there for her with your whole life, that's a big sign to you, guy, that this is unequally yoked, and chances are your whole relationship, uh, partnership, engagement, marriage, or whatever it is, is going to be the same way. So you have to realize that, take accountability and responsibility for your own actions and know that it's up to you to know that enough, when enough is enough. And quit on situations that are not reciprocating energy back to you guys. We have a hard time understanding that. I know that because I'm a man. I know how we'll put, we'll, we got a diehard spirit. We think we can talk it in there to them. We think we can put the money in there and pay for them and, and, you know, and pay for bills and stuff for them. We think we can just do all type of things to impress them. And I'm telling you, it won't work if she's not the right woman. Because you can send your, set yourself on fire, jump through fiery hoops and bend over backwards. It will never work get you anywhere with a woman who doesn't have your best interests and your concerns at heart. So make sure you're picking the right women when you know you want to be exclusive with someone or be committed to someone. Now, if you're not committed, this video ain't for you. Live your life as free as you will. Find the people who like to live free and y'all live free together and be happy. But this video is to people who are trying to be together with significant others, partnerships, relationships, uh, any ship. You're trying to go places in life and you need people to go places now. I'm telling you, nobody can do it by themselves, no matter how rich you are, no matter how much of a melanated being you are, no matter how much a Caucasian, whatever you are, you can't do it by yourself. No matter how much of whatever you think you got by yourself, you can't do it by yourself. So men know that you cannot think you're going to invest your time, money, and effort into a situation and change a woman. If she's not willingly concerned about your best interest and and concerns and your life the way that you are in hers she's not going to reciprocate the energy you need to go ahead and figure that out as you arguing as you the first beginnings of you telling her look why you did that or or and when you're saying why did you let us why you did that to us like that or or why did you hurt my feelings like this if you keep having to ask why and she's never changing with behavior she don't care about you if the apology she give you doesn't come with changed behavior she is not sympathetic or sincere, and she's going to continue to do the same things. And her words won't mean anything. It's going to drive you crazy, really, because the actions don't match up. So leave that situation, guys. You are in the wrong situation, and if you stay and something crazy happens, it's your fault. If you stay and make a worse situation out of a bad one, it's your fault. I don't care how you look at it. Now, guys, understand that. Learn how to have discernment to foresee things and know when someone is not right for you, know when you're not going to overly invest yourself and be done with it because you entertained her. All right? It's your fault. Take accountability and responsibility. Thank you, guys.